During August, India joined the US, former Soviet Union, and China in achieving a soft landing on the moon. The Indian spacecraft Chandrayaan-3 took off on July 14th, becoming the first mission to successfully land on the southern lunar pole on August 23rd. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, invested roughly $75 million on their lunar mission. The race to reach this little explored part of the moon was almost won by Russia's Luna 25, which crashed on the moon's surface days before India's landing. The southern lunar pole is such an attractive target for exploration, as scientists believe water could be trapped in the area. This water could be used to support life, or even create rocket fuel, potentially making an outpost for future space exploration. The Soviet Union dominated the early space race. Luna 2 was the first spacecraft to make contact with the moon in 1959, and Luna 9 made the first soft landing in 1966. The US is still, as of today, the country with the most successful lunar missions, and remains the only country to land humans on the moon. Space missions have also become appealing for private companies. In 2019, Israel's Space IL, although unsuccessful, was the first private company to send a lander to the moon. Upcoming lunar missions include private agencies, such as SpaceX, Astrobiotic Technology, Blue Origin, and again Space IL, striving to join the exclusive club of moon landers. In the course of a decade, NVIDIA CEO Hensen Huang has overseen the company's move beyond gaming into AI. Today, the dominant force in the market for GPUs has grown to become a pioneer in accelerated computing and the brains behind ChatGPT, the tool that has sparked mass interest and hype around AI across the world. Benefiting from this AI boom, NVIDIA posted record quarterly figures in August, generating over $13.5 billion in revenue, up 101% in a year and up 88% from the previous quarter. Strong demand for data center products that are essential to generative AI have helped fuel the company's recent quarterly successes. NVIDIA's technologies and solutions are crucial to train and run a variety of large language models, most notably the one developed by OpenAI. ChatGPT, which generates human-like responses to user queries within seconds, was trained using tens of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs, linked together in an AI supercomputer belonging to Microsoft. NVIDIA's latest earnings have also helped strengthen the company's position in the exclusive Tech 1 Trillion Club, a ranking of companies based on market capitalization, putting NVIDIA up alongside the likes of Microsoft, Alphabet, Google's parent company, and Amazon. While fellow chipmakers AMD and Intel may seem the natural competitors to NVIDIA's AI crown, major cloud computing providers could also pose a challenge to NVIDIA going forward. These firms are developing their own AI chips in a bid to cut into NVIDIA's lead, tapping into a market that could be worth up to $165 billion by 2030. BRICS, the trade and political alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, held its annual summit in Johannesburg during August. The summit focused on expanding the bloc, eventually inviting Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, the UAE and Saudi Arabia to become member nations. Around 40 countries have apparently expressed interest in joining. These countries can now join BRICS from the 1st of January 2024, becoming part of an increasingly powerful counterweight to the G7. More than 40% of the world's population currently live in one of the BRICS countries, and the combined GDP of these nations exceeded 26.3 trillion US dollars by the end of 2022. Largely driven by China's economic development, this is expected to surpass 38 trillion dollars by 2028. In fact, China and India's growth are largely responsible for BRICS overtaking the G7's share of global GDP. As well as considering new members, the summit also considered how to reduce a dependence on the US dollar in international trade. While a BRICS currency isn't currently on the table, Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva suggested such a currency to reduce the impact of exchange rate fluctuations, while other BRICS leaders stated they wanted to use their national currencies more. As of the final quarter of 2022, Data from the International Bank of Settlements showed the US dollar was involved in the vast majority of global foreign exchange transactions. To find out more about these stories and countless others, head over to Statista and join us next month for another round of Month in Data.